All righty, we we're ready to get started. Hello everyone, my name is Chris Lavoie and I manage tech partnerships for Gorgeous and I'll be your host today. Thank you so much to everyone for tuning in, especially on a Friday, no less. Uh, we're excited to have a rock star panel assembled here today to share tips, tricks and forecasts for how you can start leveraging automation tactics for your brand ASAP. Before we jump into the presentations, just a few uh, housekeeping items that we wanna to share with you guys. Um, first and foremost, just want to tell you a little bit about this series, the motivation of why we started these webinar series and, and ultimately the, the goal of them. So in Q4, we launched an ongoing tech partner series where each month we assemble star-studded panels such as the one we have with you today in the e-com arena to speak on a hyper-focused hyper theme with the number one goal of educating our valued customers like many of you with us today. You can see here that some of the different events we've hosted so far. So we've hosted some events on uh, how to prepare for return season, which was pretty crazy this year. Uh, we did an omni-channel e-commerce strategy event uh, this actual this Monday this week. We've done events on loyalty and customer retention. So how do you keep all those customers that you obtain through BFCM in the holiday seasons? We did one on um, mobile commerce best practice tips as well. And we're going to keep doing these type of webinars. And so it's really important for us that we collect feedback from you after these events so we can better understand what type of things that you'd like to learn about and so we can keep bringing on our partners who can speak to those specific things. The only thing that we ask from you, aside from paying as much attention as you can, which I know is difficult on a Friday, is to ask questions. So these events, one thing I love about them is they're super engaged, super active. People are asking questions, they're sharing thoughts and notes within our chat, but there's also a Q&A panel inside the webinar platform that you'll see where you can ask questions. Um, if you have a specific question about a, one of our partners that are with us today, then make sure to just reference them. So you can say, hey, Kevin from Recharge, can you answer this specific question? We're gonna be posting a number of polls um, several of which are specific to a, a specific platform partner that's with us today. Um, the other thing that we're asking you to do is just engage, um, as we said, just ask your questions. This is a great opportunity to get some face time with these, these great technology partners that we have um, to get some questions answered about their platform. You might be interested in using their services. What better time to get some feedback than today? And then, as I said, giving some feedback. So we'd love to hear from you. Drop us uh, some notes in the chat and feel free to reach out to me afterwards to let me know about some topics that you'd like to see in a future webinar. In terms of the format for today, we have five speakers, including Gorgeous. It's gonna be 15 minute presentations, including a Q&A for each speaker. So each speaker will have their own um, slot and then we'll keep moving forward throughout. And uh, one thing I wanted to mention as well is we're gonna be uh, doing several special giveaways. Um, obviously not gonna leave you empty handed today. So um, following the, the presentations of the speakers today, we'll be um, announcing some uh, lucky people who are with us. The key is that you have to actually be live with us on the air to be eligible for those specific uh, rewards. And we'll announce those as we go. Setting the stage, today's event is all about automation e-commerce. It's becoming a super popular theme. And that's why we've assembled the, the panel that we have with us today. They all have products uh, or services or platforms that really enable merchants like yourselves to start leveraging automation, which as we know is huge. And some of the things just to set the stage that you can and should be automating are shipping fulfillment and inventory management, management which is absolutely massive. Scubano will likely talk a lot about that today. Uh, a few other things here, loyalty, retention, customer service, which I'll be talking about, billing and subscriptions, which uh, Recharge will be talking about, marketing and advertising, that's another huge one that people are starting to automate more and more of. And then Alloy, who's with us today, is gonna be able to talk about all of these things and then Ada, who's with us as well, they're gonna talk a lot about um, how they've developed an insanely powerful product um, to really automate a lot of your, your live chat functionality. So super excited to have the panel that we have with us today. I already mentioned the, the special giveaway. We'll be giving away a set of AirPod Pros, which we'll announce later on. And without further ado, we're gonna kick off today's event. Um, really excited to start off with, uh, with Alloy. And so I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen and I'll let Sarah uh, kick things off for us. So Sarah, free, feel free to get your slide deck up and running. Well, Sarah's getting set up, I'm just gonna have her a, a quick introduction. She is the co-founder and CEO of Alloy. A fun fact about her is she has climbed uh, construction cranes before, and so hopefully we'll save some time at the end of her presentation to dive deep into what that has looked like, and maybe there's picks for proof. And yeah, she's the founder of Alloy, um, which is an e-commerce automation platform used by the likes of uh, Italic, the Denver Broncos, which I'm a Patriots fan, so I'm not sure how I feel about that, but that's okay. Um, she was an engineer in her past, and I'm sure she still exercises many of that um, at Snap uh, and Do Not Pay. And she 
It had dropped out of Harvard after one year, but it doesn't look like that has uh, phased through one bit. So super excited to have Sarah with us today. And with that, I'll, the floor is all yours, Sarah. Thanks, Chris. Um, can you guys see my screen, actually? Just want to make can. sure. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. So I'm Sarah, the founder of Alloy. We're a relatively young company, so founded around a year and a half ago. Um, and before this, I had went to school at Harvard and worked at Snap and Wish for a bit. Um, and the reason we started Alloy is because... Um, as you guys all know, running a store is quite messy and manual. And so I personally run a very small Shopify store and the back end just starts getting crazy with all the apps that I have. And so we realized that, you know, there's better ways to connect the tools than like one-to-one -one and like between app to app, that there should be some platform to, you know, help you orchestrate all these different actions in a more organized way. And so Alloy is essentially that. We're a platform that helps you automate everything from loyalty and customer experience to support um, fulfillment and operations. But we can help you do a lot of things that are cross-functional. It doesn't have to be within like support because that's what Gorgeous is good at. So an example of that is if you have Yotpo and you have Gorgeous, if a customer's Yotpo loyalty points decrease by 50, then you might want to de-escalate their Gorgeous ticket. So this is something that kind of falls into both like loyalty and support. And we're here to make sure that the transactions between all these different apps are coordinated. And so here's sort of this visual that might help you understand where we sit in this tech stack. Um, and so you have all like your e-commerce platform is the base of everything, all of your different apps that start like piling up on top and we're there to help you just manage it all. Um, if you set up automations on Alloy, ideally you shouldn't have to go into like a spreadsheet all the time. You can export it. Um, email or Slack the data you need and get the reports as well. And so that's what Alloy does. Um, I will kind of go into all of the examples of how you could use Alloy with Gorgeous specifically. So essentially we connect to all the different APIs of the apps you use. So with Gorgeous, that means we can adjust and edit customers, events, even macro, macros, um, as well as tickets. And so we can post it, push data there or pull data from Gorgeous. And so as you can imagine, you can connect other apps. So when certain events happen in like a Yotpo or like a stamped loyalty app, you can then trigger an action in Gorgeous. It can also happen vice versa. So if a new ticket message was created in Gorgeous, you can then push that data to like a PostScript or an SMS app. Um, so two-way data transactions. And we have a whole no-code interface here that lets you um, set up those actions to automate without any, um, you know, technical expertise. And what's special about Alloy, so the way you can think of Alloy is we are like a Zapier for e-commerce, but as you can see, we're very visual. We're also a bit like Shopify Flow, but for any store, you don't have to be on Plus to use us. But compared to those two products, we do offer a lot more like complex um, technical capabilities. And so an example of that is branching. What this means is you can create branches of logic. So let's say you, a customer fills out a form in type form or inquired like post-purchase um, for like their preferences for the type of food they want to get in their subscription box from your store. We can let you create branches that check like what the most, um, you know, what category the customer chose and then send them appropriate marketing messages or, you know, just take the actions depending on what data is returned from different apps. So we have all of that. It's very like it's a very visual tool. So um, you don't need to be technical to understand how this works. And that's the goal of all of this. Um, we're empowering all store owners, whether you're small, not on plus, um, or very large, and you're like the marketing manager at um, in Italic. Um, you can use this tool to get your work done. And so you shouldn't need to be interfacing with an engineer. So more concretely, some examples of gorgeous automated workflows with Alloy. Um, you could connect your aftership as a trigger in a workflow so that you get um, updates when, you know, there's new um, tracking updates. And then this triggers a workflow and then causes a message to be added to a gorgeous ticket with that update. And then you could also update the customer in the same workflow via SMS bump or attentive um, or any SMS app you use. We connect to most of them. Um, so you can see like this, there's three different actions here. Essentially, every time um, your customer's shipment has an update, this whole workflow will, tr will trigger. So you're never having to like touch this. Once you set it up, it's just done um, and will work on its own. Another example is creating tickets for poor reviews. So we have integrations with Yotpo, Junip, um, Reviews.io, 
stamped and a couple others. And so you can use those as triggers for the workflow um, and detect when reviews are created. And you can even, rather than creating a ticket directly, you can check if it's like below three stars or if it's has like negative sentiment, then you want to create a ticket and then add exactly what you know customers were saying. Um, so we let you configure all of that dynamically as well. So those were just some examples of how you can transfer data from different apps and then also detect events to then create data in Gorgeous. Um, there's also some larger use cases around creating a customer data platform where you centralize a bunch of different data attributes about customers inside Gorgeous customer profiles or tickets. So we can help you do that. As you can see with this visual, we essentially like can help you make Gorgeous the center of your customer data and then get detect all these events and then add um, attributes to all of these data points in Gorgeous. So essentially all the things you might be updating manually right now or your customer reps are doing that, uh, we can just get the data to flow seamlessly in. So here's an example of a customer we work with recently. So Opte is a luxury like skincare um, technology product. So they're not like skincare that you put on your face. It's actually this tool. Um, it's used by Kim Kardashian, Paris Hilton, and they're they're actually a plus, um, a Shopify plus store. And so they chose to use Alloy instead of Shopify Flow because they had a lot of complex functions that needed the branching and the logic on top of just data transfers um, and automation. So we helped them connect their Shopify, um, the type form, which they were using to collect um, customer requests, and then Google Sheets and Gorgeous. And so what that enabled us to do for them was to automate the process of creating tickets from type form to Gorgeous, and then also creating automated weekly reports into Google Sheets based off of like slow customer um, support responses or like open tickets, things like that. Um, and then also getting all of this data back into Shopify as well. So this was a very two-way data sync. Um, I think there were multiple different workflows involved to get all of that um, automated. So this saved them 10 plus hours a week that their, um, I think ops manager was spending doing this manually. And obviously it costs a lot because the salary is pretty high if you're uh, managing the whole e-commerce store. And so, I kind of just talked about the use cases. We have 80 integrations right now on Alloy, spanning everything from loyalty to 3PLs. Um, we recently added ERPs like NetSuite and then actually more e-commerce platforms that are not just Shopify. So we integrate with Magento, BigCommerce and a couple headless tools. And so, yeah, if we don't have an integration that you are looking for, then just let us know. Um, we're adding around, I think at this rate, five to eight a week. And so chances are we have what you're looking for. So yeah, that's us. Um, you can get started, just reach out to us or sign up yourself and we can make sure we set up those automations for you. Um, and then also last thing, um, we recently did a fundraise, a five mil fundraise from a bunch of our app partners actually. So the founders of Shippo, Attentive, ShipBob, they all invested in us. And so we're constantly looking to work with more app partners. So if you are, um, in app partnerships manager here, you can also reach out to us um, and we'll get you set up as well. Amazing. Yeah, well, thank you so much for that, Sarah. Um, it's the second time that we've had you on for a webinar and it's been a thrill for me. I know personally to, to learn more about your product. I know our team internally, certainly our CEO is super excited to, to see the automation um, capabilities with Alloy. We do have a few questions before we let you off the hook here. Um, we did have one question from John Gill I think you touched upon it a little bit, but how many APIs does Alloy connect with in big commerce? And mm -hmm. is Alloy a data connection only or also a workflow? Yeah, so we are like a workflow builder. So you can be adding um, logic and functions on top. So it's not just like a data sync. You can say like, if the order value is X amount, then sync the data. So it's not um, just, you know, one-to-one. -one. And we do, I think we connect with at least 30 endpoints in BigCommerce. So everything inside orders, like create, order, edit, order, delete, um, carts, checkouts, um, customers, and a couple other resources. So pretty extensive there. Got it. And another question I'm sure you get a lot of is, is how, do you, how does a brand get started with automation? You know, as a store, you know, we have a lot of merchants with us today that are probably wondering, I'd love to start implementing autom automation. We don't have a bunch of technical people on our staff to really manage this. So can you speak a little bit about how, you know, a typical merchant might get started with automation? Yeah, so I actually did not share this in the slides, but we do have a marketplace of these pre-built 
um, workflow recipes. And so as, as a customer of Aloe, you get access to basically what our partners have built and also some of our top merchants. Um, so you can check out what best practices look like for automation and then instantly get set up as long as you connect your apps. Um, but yeah, essentially, as long as you have your apps and an idea of what you're looking to automate away, we can help you get started. Got it. Another question for you is, is what type of stores or what roles would typically use Alloy or be a good fit for Alloy? Yeah. So anyone who's interfacing with the e-commerce like management side, if you're working with the apps yourself, your growth marketer, fulfillments manager, um, all of those types of roles can use Alloy for the work they do. Got it. And a question I know I, I have and, and I get from my partners that I'm on calls with all, all the time is, is if you are an app company, how do you integrate onto Alloy so that their customers can act, get access to all these automation features? And I'm on these calls and we're brainstorming and I'm telling everybody who will listen to me um, to, to start thinking about partnering up with Alloy. So how, how would an app partner of ours, for instance, uh, get in talks with you guys to get some integrations built? Yeah, so just reach out to us. I'll put the email below. Um, we are opening up a self-serve way to integrate onto us. So far, we've done all the engineering ourselves. So that's why a lot of partners like us because there's never any heavy lifting or you don't have to think about allocating resources um, to integrate. But in a month or so, we will make that self-serve. But for now, if you reach out to us before end of March, we will build integration for you. Got it. And can you tell us a little bit about the, the onboarding process to say I'm a... I'm a merchant, I'm, you know, 10 to 25 million GMV. I have a number of things that I think could stand to be, you know, leveraged from an automation standpoint. Can you talk about if that workflow wasn't already in process or already established with Alloy? How, how long would it take and, and what's the onboarding process look like? Yeah, if it's a custom workflow, so we have a couple options. We do have a lot of partners, so agencies and individual developers we can um, assign to you to help you build that out. Or as part of onboarding, if you're a paying customer, we will help you build out the first one. Um, otherwise, we do recommend someone with a bit more technical experience to at least help configure the first ones. But it is a very easy platform to pick up. Got it. That's awesome. All right. Well, that's that's it, Sarah. Thank you so much for for joining us yet again. And uh, yeah, I'll yeah. Uh, I dropped in uh, your website there. Feel free to drop in your email and LinkedIn. And and I recommend everybody check out Alloy to see how they can start leveraging their platform for your brand. And uh, yeah. yeah, thanks so much, Sarah. Thanks, Chris. Awesome. All right, super uh, excited to keep the, the party going here. Really excited to be joined by a fellow Ontarian here in Canada. Anthony, I'll let you start getting your, uh, your sh screen sharing set up if you'd like, and I'll, uh, I'll make your introduction. Let me know if you have any technical, I think you're muted there. No, thank you. Good to go here. Per perfect, uh, I'll let you know when I can see your screen. Just a quick intro for Anthony. He is a solutions consultant, a fantastic one at that. I can speak from experience being on a few calls with him recently. Uh, a fun fact about him is on the weekends, he runs a pop-up kitchen with his brothers in Toronto. Definitely want to learn more about that since I am in Toronto. I'd love to check that out. Uh, a quick intro on Anthony. He's a senior member of the solutions consulting team at Ada. Um, he's focused on collaborating with partners and customers to design and build new and innovative user experiences within the Ada platform. He's passionate about creating valuable customer interactions that push businesses forward and help them scale. As I said, I've seen this live. Um, this is very much accurate. And yeah, super excited to, to learn more about the Ada platform today. And I'm, I'm sure the merchants with us today are as well. So with that, the floor is yours, my friend. Cool, perfect. And just, just checking that everything looks good on, on the screen there. Looks great. Okay, perfect. Um, so really, thanks, uh, thanks for the intro there, Chris. Uh, really excited to be working with Gorgeous and really uh, thankful to be invited here today. Um, so again, my role really is to work with a lot of uh, small to medium businesses and find new in a, in, and innovative ways for them to automate a lot of their customer experiences. And, and the other side of my job is really kind of building out some of these new technical partnerships um, and new ways to, to go to market. What I want to cover over today is just a bit about who Ada is, what we believe, and then how we bring automation to life uh, through our partnership with Gorgeous. So, at Ada, kind of our North Star and what drives everything we do is that we're working to create valuable customer interactions. So a valuable customer interaction in our world is something that is efficient and a positive experience for the customer. 
but is also an experience that's able to drive value for the business as well, where the business is able to, through that interaction, better understand who their customer is, what their preferences are, what products they're interested in. And so we're doing everything we can um, to, use our autom uh, to use automation through our chatbot platform um, with our kind of uh, industry leading NLP to bring this to market and to really make kind of these valuable customer interactions the focal point of everything we do. So I'll just kind of tell you a bit of a story of, of, of what really frames a lot of the way Ada thinks. So really we find that kind of when there's a low amount of conversations that you're having with your customer, everything can still be very personalized. So let's imagine a scenario where I go down to my local Starbucks, they'll know my name as I walk in the door, they'll have my order ready, they know everything about me. But if I start to think about maybe a large bank or, or a large subscription service that I've been signed up to for a long time, my interactions with them are gonna be very impersonal. They know very little about me and it's gonna take days for me to even accomplish or get a support ticket resolved. So what we find is that the, the paradigm today is really that as conversations increase, that personalization decreases and the value of those, those interactions is, is minimized. What we really believe though, is that AI has the opportunity to turn that on its head. AI allows you to connect into those data sources to know as much as you can about these users so that as the number of conversations increases, you actually have more data and you can actually personalize these conversations even more. This is really creating those valuable customer interactions that we're going after. Um, and this is really kind of the shift that we're starting to see. And what we've found with our most successful customers are the ones who've really adopted this and, and really said, hey, AI, we realize, is going to be able to start to create these new opportunities and these new avenues for our customers to interact with us that was never really even possible before. So I'll just talk a bit about kind of our approach overall. So Ada is really going to just live as that as that chatbot widget that's going to be on your website. It can be over uh, social channels as well, over SMS. We want to be that first line of defense for wherever your customers want to interact with you. So we're going to be basically take a platform approach so that any system that you have in your backend can plug into Ada and start to create that personalized experience. So Gorgeous is going to be one of our great integration partners but we can also reach directly into your big commerce, Shopify, Magento, data enrichment, customer engagement tools. Whatever data you have in your backend can start to be integrated and customize that user experience um, that's available through the chatbot. And what we've really found is we're trying to kind of simplify the user experience where today, um, maybe to, for a user to accomplish a task, it's gonna be 10 or 12 steps that they have to complete. When you start to bring AI and automation into this world, that customer may only have to do a couple of steps because we're kind of automating a lot of that on the back end so that user experience is uh, more efficient and more valuable to the user overall. Just looking a bit at kind of how we're working with Gorgeous, we've kind of worked with, worked with them to put together a package for customers so that out of the box, a lot of the automation uh, technology and a lot of the automation use cases will be taken care of. So automating, ticketing, customer creation, order tracking, starting to build proactive engagement to users. So understanding who's visiting my website, how can I interact with them at a more meaningful level? How can I start to market to these users from a chatbot perspective? So those are a lot of the experiences we're trying to build out uh, with our gorgeous inter integration. And as we look further down the road in terms of where our partnership with Gorgeous will go, we're starting to think about how do we start to integrate those live chat agents directly into Ada and really starting to understand how can we contain and automate a lot of those uh, standard questions within Ada before ever having to get those live agents involved from a ticketing or from a live chat perspective. Next, I just wanna go into a bit uh, about kind of a case study we have here company called Shapermint, big e-com company, and they, they sell women's wear online. They're one of the companies that's really leaned into Ada and, and really started to make use of all the benefits that AI and automation can bring to them. So they've been able to uh, resolve over 55% over of their inquiries without agents today. Three quarters of their order tracking issues are handled directly through the bot. 
And as they've grown their company, they've actually been able to decrease the contact rate for customers by 38%. So both of those numbers are going in opposite direction. and They've really kind of embraced ADA. And something ShaperMint has done that's been really interesting is they've started to turn these extremely personalized user experiences within the bot to upsell and cross-sell opportunities now. So my users are coming in to find out about order tracking or to check on a support ticket. And we've been able to resolve that and the user's happy with that experience. And then we've been able to, because we we know who they are, we know what they've previously purchased, we can start to make recommendations based on preference, um, based on uh, user segment. So we're starting to create new avenues for marketing and sales content, all within the confines of the Ada chatbot. So, that's just a bit about us and, and how we're approaching automation and how we see it kind of really impacting customer experience. And just kind of as a wrap up here, if anybody's interested in demo, just go to ada.cx slash demo and we'd be glad uh, to schedule that with you. Awesome. Yeah, thanks so much for that, Anthony. I know personally uh, at the Gorgeous team, we're super excited to partner with Ada to really level up the, the capabilities that we have with our chat. So thanks so much for that great introduction to Ada. Few questions before we let you off the hook here. Um, one of them is: Is how have things changed? Uh, certainly, you know, recently, and, and what have you learned in 2020, and how are you planning for 2021 and beyond as you guys think about your product? I think what we experienced in 2020 was obviously a lot of uncertainty and a lot of crazy things going on. But what I think it forced a lot of companies to do is to understand how we're going to be able to scale in a lot of scenarios, scale that customer support and to understand what role automation is gonna play in that. A, a good example is, is we, we have, a, a Zoom is our customer, and when before COVID hit, they were sitting at about 80, 90, 90 million uh, users, and overnight they had to scale to 400, 600 million users within a matter of weeks. And wow. then they could not really have done that without Ada automating a lot of that customer experience for them. So that's just an example of, of some of the experiences we've seen uh, over the last 12 months. Yeah, no, that's it's really uh, interesting to hear. We, we've kind of experienced the same as well with our customers, and that's a huge goal for us this year is how can we, you know, for these explosive growth merchants who all of a sudden have this huge uptick in volume, how can we make sure that we have the, the product functionalities to, to withstand that, that workload? So, yeah, definitely agree with that. And it's interesting to hear the numbers about Zoom. Uh, another question we have for you is now that we've had time to digest the enormous changes in the market, Obviously, how is your team working to prepare in the future? And I know you touched upon it a little bit, but can you expand on that? I think what we've done a lot of internally is I think we've we've been able to solidify what that that product offering is and kind of that that base platform. And now we're reaching out to customers or partners like Gorgeous to see, okay, what are the different ways that we can start to apply this technology? I think our NLP and the automation tools we have in the back end are, have matured. And now it's just uh, an example of how we can we find the different ways that this can be applied. And something that, that I've just found really interesting in a previous life, I worked in, in an industry where there was a right way or a wrong way to work, use a product. And with automation, with Ada's tools, it's really up to the creativity of, of the, the, the administrators and the people on our customers end who can dream up these automation scenarios that were never really possible before and, and they could get as creative as want. So it's really interesting to see how our customers um, mold and use the tool to, to meet their needs. Got it. And then the last question before we, uh, we wrap up here is, is what are things that used to be essential that aren't anymore? things that used to be essential. So some things that we've found really interesting with some of our customers is they've started to shift away from certain support avenues that they used to offer. So we've been able to kind of automate a move away from phone, for example, for some of our customers or from, mm -hmm. um, from online forums. So we've been able to kind of use automation to allow them to shift in those different directions. Now it takes some effort with that company from a kind of strategic angle of, okay, we've got to shift our, our phone customers to a chat experience, but we found that all to be very successful. And, and we've got a lot of uh, customers who, who we've helped make a big change uh, by bringing automation in. Got it. Yeah, I appreciate that. I'm just checking the numbers. I, I posted a poll here of asking our people with us today, how much of their customer support volume they're automating and 
and 83% of them said less than 10% of their customer support volume. So I imagine that both of us are pretty surprised by that number. And hopefully uh, after today's talk, people will start to appreciate just how much uh, not only automating can benefit your store, but how many great tools there are like the platforms with us today to, to actually make that possible. I know a lot of people are overwhelmed by the prospect of getting super technical, but um, that's why I love it with the technologies that we have with us today. But yeah, thanks so much, Anthony. It was a pleasure to have you on board. Go enjoy that uh, sunny Toronto weather that we have here today, and uh, we'll be talking to you soon. Thanks, Chris. All right, see you. All righty. We're going to keep the show going here. Um, so yeah, so up next is Gorgeous, and I'm, uh, I'll be presenting for the Gorgeous team today. So quick introduction to myself. My name is Chris Lavoie. I am the tech partner manager here at Gorgeous, which means I get to work super closely with all of our fantastic tech partners, all of which, uh, some of which, sorry, we have uh, with us today. So I absolutely love my job. I get to re work really closely with Gorgeous's product, which I absolutely love, but I also get to work closely with the product of our partners, which is also a, a thrill for me as well. Fun fact about myself, since uh, everybody else had to do it, I guess I have to do it as well. Um, I do have a PhD in organic chemistry, which probably doesn't sound too fun for everybody else, but it was pretty fun for me. Somehow, some way, I found myself into the e-commerce arena, and there's no turning back for me. I absolutely love it and, and couldn't be more excited to be here. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna start this my talk off by just introducing Gorgeous for those of you who aren't familiar with it. Talk a little bit about some table stakes features of our product just to kind of set the stage and give you some important context. And then we'll dive right into the deep end for to talk about specifically how Gorgeous can, can really improve the automation capabilities for your customer support. Um, so quickly, Gorgeous is a help desk built specifically for e-commerces to enable you to manage your, your customer support. It, uh, it tightly integrates with all of the major e-com platforms, such as the one shown here. We, In terms of who we work with, we work with over um, 5,500 um, leading DTC brands in the e-commerce space, several of them uh, shown here. And really, the, the brands who, who come to us and, and really enjoy working with us are those fast-growing brands who might be experiencing some pain managing customer support, um, say, through Gmail, um, and as or they're using other previous help desks, and they don't find that the level of automation isn't there, the level of personalization that they can provide to their customers isn't there, um, and certainly the, the level of live chat functionality isn't quite there. So that's a big reason that our customers decide to come to us. And Abdul, I think your microphone is uh, on right now, so if you don't mind muting that, thank you so much. Perfect. So just to talk a little bit about why we have invested so much in developing the product that we have and why customer support is so important. Everybody knows it's important to deliver customer support, but what do the numbers say? So the three big takeaways from this otherwise busy slide is that more than ever before, customers are expecting to receive excellent customer service they want personalized customer support experiences, and they want fast and immediate responses. I think we can all speak uh, speak to these points. You know, for myself, if I'm shopping online, as soon as I start to encounter some friction, or I'm I'm getting bad customer support, or I'm not getting any of it at all, then unless that brand is Nike and I'm super loyal to them, I'm going to go find the next best thing because obviously it's becoming more of a competitive market. So we know from all the research and data, and certainly from our own research, that excellent service personalized experience and fast and immediate responses are absolute must-haves, not nice-to-haves, if you're a brand trying to deliver uh, stellar customer support. So these are the guiding principles our around our entire product, and certainly automation is baked into a lot of this. Excellent customer support is also intimately tied with fast and personalized experience as well, and so that's a, a big focus of today. So that begs the question, what are we doing to help you, merchants, uh, leverage start leveraging automation through the context of support so one of the first things that we did is we knew we had this great product um, but we wanted to make sure that we were accurately developing product features that our customers actually cared about so we analyzed with their permission over 10,000 tickets which we consider individual conversations that you might have with customers so if someone reaches out and say hey where's my order or what's up with this order delivery status that would be a unique ticket conversation and not surprisingly, one third of all tickets analyzed were related to order status. So I just give you an example of one that that might be. And so these are the top ten um, ticket types. And I know some of these don't seem as much three percent, two percent. That doesn't sound like a lot, but for some of our customers, they're dealing with ten to twenty thousand tickets in a month. So you know these are hundreds and hundreds of tickets each month that you're getting, um, which is quite a lot. And so we asked ourselves, how can we enable our merchants to automate as much of these ticket inquiries as possible. Uh, but the key challenge, and you'll hear a lot about this certainly this year, 
in the support realm is how do you balance automation and speed with personalization? And one of our favorite brands, Tushy, uh, which is a bidet company that we work with, they're an absolute, they absolutely crush balancing automation with personalization. You don't want to just automate everything where you start sounding like a robot. So they do a great job making it seem like you know, they're delivering a personalized experience, but also being fast and, and efficient with how they manage customer support. So some table stakes stuff. Our deep integration with the major e-com platforms like Shopify means we're pulling in all the information living on those endpoints. So we're, we're showing all of their, their recent order history, um, lifetime spend, average order value, et cetera. So if I'm talking to you, say I'm talking to, to Anthony, who's just with us, and he's, he's messaging in my store, I'm having a conversation in a ticket, I can see all the information associated with his account via Shopify, which means I can deliver him the information he's asking for. So it might be he's asking about an order status, but I also have a bunch of other information that gives me really important context on Anthony's purchasing behavior. So I can understand if he's a VIP customer. I can understand if he often leaves negative reviews. I can understand if he often um, asks for refunds or return and exchanges. I can leverage that information to give him a more personalized experience. So that's the personalization side. And then a big focus today will be how do you balance that with great automation and speed? Personalization and scale, that was exactly what I was talking about. So one of the key features of Gorgeous that certainly is one of the big takeaways that I hope you all get today is that we have powerful macros and rules, which I'll talk about in a minute, that really make it easy to respond fast and accurately. So here I'm showing you an example of a macro, which is a pretty standard feature that you'll see across the other help desk solutions that exist in the space. And essentially what they are are canned responses that will you can personalize as, as much as you'd like. So this is an example of email copy that would be populated. So for instance, say Michelle asked of, uh, for an order status update, but what happened is, is we could go find the order status or, or where is my order uh, macro, and it would, it would pull in all of these Shopify variables, including the personalized email copy that we included. And as soon as we hit send, it would close the ticket, it would send this email, and it would automatically pull in all of these information um, from Shopify. So no more switching tabs, no more going deep into Shopify to find all the specific information. Just find that macro, um, include these Shopify variables and hit submit. Um, and then everything is done. And so that's a, a great example of how you can still have personalization. You can dress this copy up however you like, but it's still super fast because you're able to just uh, include all of these Shopify variables or Magento or Big Commerce, for instance. Uh, uh, one thing I definitely want to highlight is we, you know, one of our number one most used integrations is Recharge, who we're fortunate to have with us today. And so uh, we have a number of use cases and, and awesome benefits of the integration. One of those many instances is our macro capabilities with Recharge. So literally within our each ticket, if you have Recharge set up as an integration with you, um, they're so special to us that we have them built into our actual ticket action um, taskbar. So there's a number of actions that we're going to keep adding new ones as our customers see the need for them. So you can actually set up macros just like the one I showed you on the previous slide for specific recharge actions like the one shown here, which is super powerful. And as I said, we're going to keep adding and improving the functionality of these. In terms of how many macros some of our merchants actually use, I pulled some data from this morning. And so what this chart is showing you is how many merchants are using how many macros. And so you can see this, uh, this bar here is, is 10 macros. And so the majority of, of our merchants are using between 10 to 20 macros, but you can just see the span here. Some of our merchants are using <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of macros just to give you a sense. And so, some people literally have Google Sheet libraries um, and specific guides for new support agents to, to use to, in order to find the right macro. And, and that might seem overwhelming, and which is why one of the new features that we're launching this year is suggested and recommended macros, meaning uh, you get a message in, our machine learning will read the message from a customer and it will recommend which macro to use, which is phenomenal for any support agent. But imagine you're a new onboarding agent, you're just starting at Tushy, for instance, and you're looking through the macro bin and you're like, holy cow, how do I know which one to use? Now all of a sudden you'll be able to, it'll recommend the top three macros that probably will apply to that specific conversation, which is huge. Another big thing that's a, a part of our product is our machine learning, which can detect intent. This is getting better and better as the training sets get more improved. And ultimately what this means is that, as I said, a conversation, a message from a customer will be read, it'll be understood, and it will apply a tag to that specific ticket. Tagging is like a key feature of our product. Um, it'll tag any ticket a specific way. And so if it, it, it could, the machine learning could detect intent and understand that this is a, a return, a related ticket, it's a, a specific question, a shipping related question. And the, the, the value of that is we have a bunch of bins or views, we call them within Gorgeous, on our dashboard 
that are you can break down however you'd like. So say you had a VIP bucket, say you had a social media channel bucket. If our machine learning intent, um, you can set it up quite easily, detected that a ticket was tagged as such, it would automatically dump that ticket into a specific bucket, which means if I'm a customer support agent for a specific brand and I'm responsible for handing VIP tickets because I'm a more senior agent, I have more experience, I better, I better understand our brand, then that's my bucket of tickets. I know to go in there and immediately address those tickets. So it's a great way to automate focusing on the tickets that deserve attention fast. Um, so, and that's you know a huge part of the product itself. And I talked a little bit about macros and how intimately tied they are to rules. So I'll talk about that now. And so rules are a fantastic feature of ours. Again, rules is not unique to the Gorgeous platform. There are other help desks that do have some rules um, baked into their product, but certainly not to the, to the level of complexity um, and breadth of, of scope that our rules will enable. And, and certainly the ease in which you can set up your own custom rules is, is quite a, a unique selling proposition for the Gorgeous platform. So essentially what you need to know is it's a series of if statements, logic statements, that if satisfied will trigger some predefined action. So I just have a really simple use case shown here. So imagine a customer is, is, is messaging you in and they're asking about an order status, which as I showed you is, is typically one third of all of your customer support volume. Then when a ticket is created, so a customer emails you, and if the message contains any of the following, where is my order? And it's that's typically how people can set it. You could add other things like, where is order? You can sometimes there's there's uh, different variations you want to add into it. Then reply with this specific macro. They've called this a uh, tracking number. You could call the macro whatever you like. And then that macro that I'd shown you before, it'll automatically fire that specific message, which will include your personalized email copy. It'll include the uh, the Shopify variables. And so you can automate up to thirty to forty percent of your entire support volume just by setting up these cleverly crafted rules. And it's phenomenal to me to, to work with our merchants to see how differently they're using rules. And, and as I said, some of our merchants are able to automate up to 40% of all your messages, which is phenomenal. It's, it doesn't just mean your customers are getting fast support, which as I said, is one of the top three goals for any support team. Um, but it also frees up important bandwidth that your merchants, or sorry, your support agents need to go focus on those more important tickets like those VIP tickets that I mentioned. Another core piece uh, of the whole gorgeous puzzle is we really consider ourselves an omni-channel customer support help desk. And what that means is there's essentially no channel or avenue that a customer is going to want to interact with your business that we're not enabling you to connect with them across. So obviously your, your key you know, channels like email, phone, texting, and social media channels, but also live chat as well. And the social piece is huge, right? So for instance, Facebook Messenger, we have a fantastic integration with Facebook Messenger. One of our customers, Wholesome Culture, we just have an example here. They posted a, uh, a, you know, a campaign on their website, or sorry, on their Facebook, you know, engage with us, send us a message, and you'll get a 10% discount code. So someone sure enough is messaging them in. That message um, will come inside of Gorgeous as a unique ticket, and you can engage with the customer just inside Gorgeous, which makes it really easy to stay connected to your customers. Um, you can do this for all your social channels. Instagram, the same type of thing. Automatically, anytime a customer will interact on your your Instagram page, so they're commenting on a, a photo, they say, "We, you know, this backpack looks awesome." You'll see that created as a ticket inside Gorgeous under your social bucket. So you might have a social media manager who is partly responsible for going inside Gorgeous and making sure that any tickets that were created were attended to. You could drop in a 15% discount code, for instance. And as I said, all of this will automatically be pulled into Gorgeous, which makes it a really easy way to stay have a great overview of all of your channels. Importantly, our Instagram DM integration is coming uh, this quarter, which is going to be a phenomenal boost for our customers. It was literally the number one most requested integration by all of our customers. And so now, just the same as the Facebook Messenger integration functions, you'll be able to leverage that type of uh, functionality with our Instagram DMs, um, which I know a lot of merchants with us today probably use quite, quite heavily. Just to take that to the next level, again, this is an automation theme event, how can we level up that social channel automation? So as I said, we talked about tags, we talked about rules, and we talked about the social media channels, and now you can combine them. So for instance, if a ticket was created and it was associated with the social media bucket, then you, it can detect the intent. So for instance, um, in this specific sequence, uh, a social media post was uh, had a customer comment on it, it was detected as a positive intent, then we can add a tag to it, say this is a social lead, uh, meaning that there's a potential upsell opportunity. 
And so me as a support agent who manages the, the social lead bucket for this specific example, I would go in there, I would see that post and I would say, hey, this, this, this person seems like they're a pretty big fan of our brand. Maybe I can drop in a, a promo code and try to generate an upsell opportunity. Again, um, you know, turning customer support into a sales engine, which is a key, key goal of the gorgeous product. Another channel a lot of people don't necessarily think about as a channel um, is live chat, uh, which you know for us we absolutely consider a live live or sorry a channel because it's literally a way to interact with your customers in real time. And if that's not a channel, then I don't know what is. And so uh, we're really excited. Um, this week on Monday we launched our new self serve live chat portal, which we're super thrilled uh, to launch. And so our, one of our customers, Decathlon, has allowed us to show you what this looks like. You can go check it out on their website. Essentially, what this is meant to do is to enable our customers to automate and, and kind of handle as much of their own questions that they might have or actions that they might want to take on their own before it gets escalated and created as a ticket inside of gorgeous. And so this can, the, the automation piece comes in by automating the amount of questions that you might get because before, um, before this chat functionality was rolled out, they would often have to message you in, email you in for specific actions. Now you can offload a lot of that because of the self-serve model. So someone fills in their email, their order number, it pulls up everything that they might have here. They can hit track um, to get some um, some information on where things stand. They can see all of their previous orders. And if they can't resolve whatever they're looking to do on the live chat, then they can escalate that to a live support agent, which um, is now 24 seven. It used to be 24 five with Gorgeous. And then one of the final pieces I wanna talk about is our revenue tracking mechanism. Um, so one of our, our key phrases that we use at Gorgeous is we wanna turn your support into a profit center. Obviously, delivering better customer support helps your bottom line because your customers remain loyal to you. It helps with retention, LTV, et cetera. Um, but on the flip side of that, as I've kind of give you some glimpses of, is we're, we're making it easier and easier for merchants to generate sales opportunities through the context of excellent support. So for instance, I'm talking to Sarah, and I just helped her out with some key problem that she had with one of our products. And at the very end of that, I say, you know, I'm really happy I was able to help you out today, Sarah. By the way, I saw that you have been a big fan of our, our, um, our cranberry soda. Um, thought you might be interested in our new orange soda that we just launched. Here's a 10% discount code, Sarah. You know, I'm not sure if she loves orange soda, but she might. And she'd be like, great, thanks so much for that. She'll click that promo code and that'll be uh, associated with uh, a sale inside Gorgeous. And we have some simple um, data metrics here that you can track quite, quite easily and accurately. You can segment it across agents to see who your top performers are. And you can segment that across different channels as well, which is great. And I've personally seen some dashboards of some of our merchants and it's quite insane to be honest, how much sales some of our top merchants are generating through support. And so people are just starting to recognize that support isn't just this painful process. Like I have to deal with these customers. People have this negative connotation with support and what we're trying to change the, the mold on is, is crap. Like customer support is literally an, an opportunity to talk to your customers and, and in the COVID world and the online world, how often do you actually get to interact with your customers in live time? So People are starting to reap the benefits of that and, and generate more sales opportunities. And then the final thing I'll mention is that, you know, as, a, as far as automation goes, Gorgeous has so much baked into its product already that makes it quite the automation powerhouse. But to take that a step further, we're connecting with more and more apps across the space, which are transforming our product into this automation engine like never before. And so for me personally, in my role, it's, it's one of the best parts of that job is, is getting to work closely with our partners I already mentioned that we have integrations with Recharge. Allo did a great job highlighting some of the workflows that you can leverage with their platform. We're partnering with Ada as well. And so, uh, you know, it's just a go to show that our automation potential and just our capabilities overall are continuously improving as we start to connect with more and more top apps in the ecosystem. And then, yeah, uh, just the, the one highlight I wanted to show here is that, as I said, gorgeous automation is already great. Partnering with Allo is basically putting that on steroids. I won't belabor the point. Sarah did a great job highlighting a specific workflow um, of how you can leverage uh, Gorgeous and Alloy as well. And I definitely recommend anyone to check out Alloy so they can start leveraging Alloy, uh, automation in their own stores. And with that, um, happy to answer any questions. One thing I do want to do first is, is offer up a, a special set of AirPod Pros. And so what I do for these is I go through our attendee list and I literally randomly scroll, which I'm gonna do now. And I'll close my eyes and wherever my mouse lands is going to be the lucky winner today. So uh, we have Brett uh, Sobsack. Uh, uh, apologies if I'm not pronouncing that. It's the uh, Sixth Sense Fishing. I'm just going to screenshot your contact information there, Brett. 
congratulations. You're our lucky winner of a set of AirPod Pros. I'll connect with you after the webinar to, uh, to send you those. So I'm just going to see if any questions came in. All right. So it doesn't look like any questions come in. It's one of the challenges of moderating your own shows. You, it's hard to, to see any questions that can come in. Anne Mara did ask, does it support multi-language? Yes, it absolutely does. I know that we, we support over, I think, 60 different languages, and we're continuously adding them as people uh, start to, to look for more and more. But yeah, really excited to, to be with you guys today. Um, thank you so much. And if you do have any questions about Gorgeous, feel free to reach out to me, chris at gorgeous.com. I'll drop that in the chat. Happy to give you guys a free demo. And we do have a special offer right now where you can get one free month of Gorgeous by signing on with us. And uh, yeah, really excited to, to meet some of you and see if uh, Gorgeous would be a good fit for you. And with that, uh, we're going to keep the show going here. And uh, up next, we have uh, Scubana. So uh, if Abdullah, if you want to get your screen up and running, I'll, uh, I'll introduce you. Awesome. Perfect. Cool. Yeah, so I'll let Abdullah get up and, up and running with his screen. Just a quick intro for, for Abdullah. He's the Director of Customer Success with our partners at Scubana. Fun fact about him is he used to have a radio show in college. Maybe we'll have time at the end to talk a little bit about that specific one. And yeah, with that, happy to uh, leave the floor to you, Abdul. Thanks, Chris. Um, nice to meet everyone on the call today. So as Chris mentioned, my name is Abdul Wally, uh, but I actually go by Wally. I've been called that since the fourth grade. Uh, came from my fourth grade teacher referencing Wally World uh, from National Lampoon's Family Vacation. So if you haven't watched it, go check it out. Um, so I do work for Scubana here. I've been with Scubana for about six years now. I'm the group director of customer success. So I interact with our customers on a daily basis on the ground floor. Um, and today I want to talk about just some of the powerful automation tools we have to help push your e-commerce business into a more time uh, efficient and automated tool. Um, real quick on what Scubana is as a uh, software. So we're a order management, inventory management um, tool that has a specific set of automated features that help um, get your e-commerce business up and running, moving you from spreadsheets, helping you move from beginner softwares to really give you back time and for you to focus more on higher value activities. So today I'm gonna to talk about just a small percentage of the many features we do have within our uh, system and that's our auto PO functionality. So just forecasting logic, uh, ways in which Scubana can help generate purchase orders for you so you, you, you don't have to worry about doing VLOOKUPs on spreadsheets, exporting out raw data from Shopify, um, trying to see how much your SKU sold as Scubana will do all that work for you, and also building a productivity machine. So that's our order bots. So our order bots help um, with your fulfillment process and uh, order routing. So those are the two features I'll be highlighting today, and if time permits, just some other tips that I'll uh, sprinkle along throughout the presentation. So the first piece that I want to talk about today is our order bot logic. So the phrase that I co uh, coined it as is it helps take the thinking from shipping or removing the thinking from fulfillment. Um, there's so many different ways in which orders can be routed, so many different ways in which uh, there's there could be different scenarios in terms of the warehouse being out of stock because the warehouse team went to go pick something and something was damaged and now you have to figure out the backup warehouse to fulfill to or what to do with that order. Um, and with this comes a lot of time and effort in determining what the right uh, trajectory is should, for that order in terms of if something were to happen with this order, which path we take. So scenario E uh, will lead to uh, action B, C, or D. And a lot of that time, it takes a lot of the day-to-day uh, -day hours of fulfilling orders. So with that, we've created our order bots to help remove that and give you back time so you don't have to worry about setting these, uh, creating these rules on the fly or manually moving orders around or calling the warehouse team to see if there's inventory or logging into a WMS system to see how much 3PL inventory you have. Everything's in one place. So we give you the ability to uh, just set things and forget them. Um, with that in mind, so the order bot example that I have here is the warehouse is assigned to Swan, which is a 3PL for uh, one of our customers, Crucial Brands, which is actually the e-commerce business of our CEO, Chad Rubin. And that, uh, again, that's our 3PL. And the order bot action is to uh, split the order by available stock, and I want to split it by the line item. So in this instance, if 
an order came in with two line items and one of them were out of stock, Scubana would automatically split the one line item that was in stock and allow it to be fulfilled. Meanwhile, the one line item that's out of stock will remain uh, back ordered. So that's just one layer of the uh, functionality. As you can see in the top right hand corner, uh, we allow you to rank your order bots. So by that, I mean, you can create a waterfall effect. So this could be the first step in your order bot process. And then the next layer would be assigning the out of stock order to a different warehouse that does have inventory. So all this can be done with order bots and ultimately your, your customer success team, your fulfillment team does not have to worry about monitoring the orders and making sure everything can be fulfilled as Scubana will automate and run these, um, run these actions for you. Now again, this is just one example I'm showing, and uh, for the purposes of time, I could spend hours on the different order bot combinations that we have, but I do want to highlight on just some of the more powerful ones uh, we do have. So we have the ability to automatically rate shop in real time. So Scubana can set an order bot to pick the best rate uh, across all the different providers you have integrated, and we would automatically select that provider and service for you to uh, fulfill your order out with. We have the ability to break down bundles. So if you have a component of your bundle that's out of stock, we can break down that bundle and use the split order bot in unison to split off the items that are, are in stock and allow you to still fulfill part, uh, partial portion of that bundle. Um, but even with the bundle breakdown, let's say your 3PL doesn't have the concept of bundling or they don't have bundle aliases, Scubana will allow you to break down bundles so that when we pass the data over via the API, to the 3PL, you'll be able to see the different line items of data um, on the 3PL side. So you don't have to worry about your fulfillment team having to memorize how bundles are built out or re reference a document on how bundles are built out because we will lay it out for them, making it easier to pick orders and therefore giving you the ability to get more orders out the door um, efficiently. And ultimately, I mean, with our order bots, again, it's not just catered to your own fulfillment. We help with 3PLs. We allow you to um, create a waterfall of warehouse backup. So if one warehouse is out of stock, you can hit another one and another one and keep going until you find the one that has inventory. So our goal here is to, again, give you back time, but also make sure that you prevent uh, back orders and stockouts and utilizing your entire fulfillment network of warehouses that you might have either internationally, domestically, uh, or both. Uh, so for example, um, Tushy, and I know Chris had mentioned Tushy as well, Tushy is also a Scubana uh, client, and our order bots really helped them during the initial uh, COVID pandemic. So when COVID first hit, and obviously Tushy sells bidets, and there was a toilet uh, paper outage, so Tushy uh, was able to step in and help out there for the lack of toilet paper. Um, with that in mind, uh, their order volume, as uh, you can see here, scaled by uh, uh, scaled 10 times. And with order bots, we were able to route their orders to the different fulfillment centers that they operate with in order to um, make sure that orders can get, get out, can get out the door while leveraging all the different inventory levels across the variety of different warehouses they integrate with. With that in mind, too, they're using uh, split order bots as well, so splitting things off line items making sure that the their client, their customer, can get the order, uh, even if it's not, get a portion of the order, even if it's not the entire order itself. Um, and that's what Scubana has offered to them and many of our clients is this automatic uh, logic of order fulfillment where the customer success team doesn't have to manually split, manually merge, uh, move orders around, and it's all done for them natively. So the other piece of our functionality that I want to briefly touch on is the supply uh, supply chain side of things. So that's the automated automated forecasting or purchasing logic that we have baked into our uh, Scubana platform. Since Scubana uh, is able to connect with almost any place you sell an order, whether we natively have a connection or we have one through an, uh, our app store uh, through a partner of ours or a tech partner of ours. Uh, we'll be able, we're the central source of truth when it comes to all your order data. Uh, therefore, we'll know every uh, every bit of sales velocity per SKU, and we'll understand how much you're selling um, on a day-to-day -day basis, because we'll, we're capturing anywhere that you're making a transaction. Uh, with that in mind, 
we're able to set up these order um, order uh, reorder rules in order to capture that data and generate purchase orders for you. Now, even though we're generating a purchase order for you, uh, we're not necessarily sending it to your vendor. So at the end of the day, you do have the final say, but we're taking that legwork out with calculating and doing the math and running through the sales velocity um, in order to generate a purchase order that is a recommended value from Scubana's logic within the platform. So there's different uh, value sets that you can set on the reorder point. So uh, sales velocity, so how many days you wanna look back on. So the default example I have here is 90 days. How many days you wanna be in stock for? for so this one has a unique one, that's 476 days worth of stock. Um, any forecasted growth, so if you're expecting an increase or decrease in sales, um, entering a buffer percentage there, and lastly, uh, uh, buffer days that are baked onto your lead time, which you can do on a product level. So the buffer days would be, uh, if you have a vendor that usually ships your shipment late, you can bake in those buffer days. Um, so with that in mind, with the calculations here, Scribana is able to make a recommended quantity to purchase and an estimated reorder date with an estimated runout date using the calculations here to uh, provide that data to you. And again, this is because Scribana prides itself on being that central source of truth, making sure we capture every bit of data when it comes to your e-commerce business in order to run these calculations and provide you the information that you're looking for. Additionally, we give you that inventory movement so you can see if inventory is in transit, uh, you can see how much you should reorder through the various analytics reports we have, which I do not have displayed today. Um, but again, we're trying to give you as much visibility into your business and by doing most of the legwork for you because we want you to focus on higher value activities, finding new products to sell, ways to increase uh, your reach to your client base. Those are the most important things to get you the revenue that you're looking for uh, as opposed to sitting on a spreadsheet and uh, doing math. Um, so this will definitely cut down labor costs. And again, it's all through this automatic, automated logic that we have built into our system. So another custom example here, example here is Nomad. So Nomad uh, has a variety of different warehouses domestically and internationally and leveraging our inventory movement reports are able to see what's in transit, when they're expected to run out of inventory, when to restock, um, and ultimately making sure that they're, they're, they always have enough inventory to service their client base as they're scaling and growing. And that's, that's, um, that's the other piece of Scubana that we wanna make sure uh, we can offer you is being in an adaptable solution. So with that in mind, our clients are able to adapt seamlessly with the COVID pandemic. They're able to adapt seamlessly if they get an influx of sales because we have the tools uh, needed to help them move their business forward and we can scale with them. So again, I, I mentioned only just a small percentage of the different automated functionality that we do have in Scubana. Uh, one thing that's unique about our um, system as an order management and inventory management operations platform is that we have a full-fledged app store. So if there's something that you don't see in our system that we don't really offer, uh, we have an open API that can be uh, easily built into and uh, leverage for the functionality that you're looking for. So Alloy, for example, just recently built in our app store and. Um, we, we have a lot of different unique integrations now that we can support based off the integrations that Alloy can support. Um, but as you can see here, there, we integrate with many 3PLs, um, QuickBooks. So we try to make sure that if there's something natively that we can't offer to help automate your business, there's a way that it can be built out or we can use a tech partner to help fill in that gap. Uh, at the end of the day, our goal is to make, make sure you get time back, as I mentioned, so you can run and operate your business to scale and grow. And um, that's all I have for today. Uh, so I'll share my contact information if you want to learn more about Scubana, but we are also doing a giveaway. So we're giving away um, an Amazon Echo. I believe that's what these are called now, Echo 8s. Uh, so Chris, if you want to do the pleasure of picking the winner. All right, cool. Here we go. Another eyes closed scroll through the, the attendee list here. Let's see who we have. Uh, I actually landed on Brett, who is the winner of the AirPod Pro. So sorry, Brett. We're going to we're gonna do one more scroll here. i got to change my scrolling practices. Here we go. Uh, we have Alex Freedom. Uh, Alex at ASAP507.com. We're going to screenshot that as well. We'll make sure that we get you those ASAP. 
Congratulations on that. Uh, Abdullah, we do have just a few questions for you before we uh, pass things off to our friends at Recharge. Uh, a couple thing. questions came in. One is, how do you currently, or sorry, that wasn't the question. What are common challenges businesses face when shifting from manual to automated processes, such as managing fulfilling orders across channels? I'm sure you get that uh, a lot. Yeah, definitely. I think um, if you're coming off spreadsheets or doing things manually and moving into a more automated and tech solution, I think the challenge itself is the learning curve. So there is yeah. a steep learning curve when you're moving from something that you had full control over and relying on a system to control it for you. Uh, but that's part of the reason why uh, we have a structured onboarding and implementation process on the Scubana side to make sure that it's handheld and there's no fear of moving over. Because it is a big change and there it's kind of, you're used to the way you do it and you're afraid to give up that knowledge and that control to something else. Uh, but that's part of our goal here is making sure that uh, there's no fear in in that change. Absolutely. Yeah. One of the polls that we uh, we had submitted was asking people how they currently manage their their operations. Only 10% of people said Scubana, so hopefully that number will increase after today's webinar. But yeah, 55% of people did say that they're managing operations via their e-commerce platforms or Shopify, for instance. So it's pretty interesting uh, to see those numbers. Another question we had for you is, what are the key benefits of automation as it pertains to inventory management. I know you touched on a few of them today, but is there one specific one that you think about that maybe merchants don't necessarily think about but should start implementing? I think, uh, as you said, there's so many different benefits, but the one that I see commonly is, and I know I put it mentioned this in my presentation, is the time. Uh, yeah. Merchants and brands don't realize how much time they're spending doing things themselves or uh, you know, running the data via spreadsheets or running it directly in the e-commerce platform and just trying to make the decisions on their own when there's tools out there that can help at least take a bulk piece of that work out of the picture. And they don't realize the time that they were spending because to them, it's just their day-to-day -day work and their day-to-day -day operations. And until that time's given back, it's more of a realization of, oh, wow, I was actually doing spending most of my day doing something that was done in five minutes by the by the software I'm using. Yeah, absolutely. Totally agree. Time. I mean, everybody knows time is valuable, but I think merchants, they get super excited about success in their, their sales, which is totally cool. But asking yourself, having the foresight to say, okay, am I automating as much as I could be? I think that's the next level for people to take the leap. And the final question we'll let you off the hook is, is, is what powerful integration capabilities are a part of the Scubana platform? Cool. Um, I think our open API is really powerful. Yeah. Uh, it's clean. It's really clean. <laughs> <laughs> there's so much different ways in which you can enhance your Scubana functionality. And uh, I've seen a variety of different API projects that it's just using raw data from Scubana to build BI tools to connect with WMSs. Um, and again, Scubana is priding itself on being that source of truth. So if we're providing you all the data that you need and we can give you the tools to build your own automation tool, uh, by all means, uh, build into our API and get what you're looking for out of it. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I've personally looked at Scubana's API, someone who loves APIs, and it's it's super clean and robust. So the opportunity is absolutely there. But yeah, no, thank you so much for, for representing Scubana so well today. It was a pleasure to have you on board with us and looking forward to having you on with our, our next webinar. Take cool. care, Abdul. Thanks. Awesome. All right. We're gonna we're gonna keep the party going here. Last but certainly not least, we have our friends from Recharge. Super excited to have my friend Kevin join us here today once again. Kevin, welcome. Hey everybody, and thanks for the warm welcome, Chris. I'll go ahead and get my uh, cool. I'll let you get your uh, I'll let you get the deck all up and running on your screen there, and I'll I'll give you the introduction. Excellent. Cool. Yeah, Kevin Liu is the uh, tech partnerships manager with our friends at Recharge. Fun fact about him is he lived in Beijing, China for a few years, which I certainly think is pretty awesome. Um, in terms of a little bit about his bio, he, you know, he is he's a product master. I've spoken with Kevin numerous times. He really loves it, not only Recharge's product but also working with other partners to really brainstorm a conceive of new ways to connect different platforms and technologies. It's a pleasure to work with Kevin. It's a pleasure to learn from Kevin and. Um, yeah, the floor is yours, Kevin. Really excited to hear what you have to say today. 
Thanks again for the warm welcome and uh, glad to join everybody here today and share some insights uh, from my vantage point here at Recharge. Um, so as Chris mentioned, I'm the Technology Partnerships Manager at Recharge. Um, and Recharge is a subscription management platform that's been running for about seven years uh, with $5.3 billion process, 14,000 merchants and 20 million subscribers. Um, what that means to say is it's given us a really interesting vantage point um, to understand the types of automations that subs uh, subscription businesses have leveraged to succeed. And it's informed a lot of our product development as well over the last seven years. Um, so when we talk about automations, we're really talking about uh, ways for merchants to eliminate repeat straightforward tasks that waste their and their other employees' times and energy, and also make certain tasks easier that hopefully make them more money. And that's really it from our you know, perspective. So, um, so you know, in terms of industry size, when you look at, at just how e-commerce is growing, it's estimated to be five hundred billion dollars by the year, you know, twenty twenty-five, and subscription-based uh, brands have an a uh, annual recurring revenue that typically grows nine times faster than the S and P five hundred average. Um, so that kind of scalability really presents. Um, you know, a, a, a perspective on the types of problems that could come in your operations um, and make it essential to define what you need to, to automate and manage within your platform. Um, so, you know, when we look at subscription businesses as, as a whole, obviously we look and think about the industries that they're engaged in. Um, on some past webinars, I've gone into that uh, a bit more, but today I really want to focus on the stage of your subscription business that you're in right now. And, um, you know, what, how that is defined helps kind of get insights in what we think is important um, to consider from an automation standpoint. So first, um, we've got these three stages and I'll talk about the latter two after, but let's start with newly started businesses. Um, newly started subscription businesses really um, are still in a product market fit discovery stage, even if they have existing products that they're retooling for subs. Um, so the idea is getting the platform set up quickly with built-in themes within Recharge for customer portal creation, um, automatic widget integrations into your storefront themes, you know, within Shopify or other platforms, and also um, just being able to set products up quickly to test what works and what doesn't, and edit the frequencies of those subscriptions, um, play with pricing and discounting and custom billing logic. Um, all of that can be handled within the platform and was built into Recharge um, out of the box without any need for really API or, or, or custom integration um, you know, work to be done. So I, the idea is you get launched ideally within minutes or days um, to get your site up and, 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 and test the market out here. Um, the other important aspect of businesses at this stage is obviously new customer acquisition. Um, so marketing automation at this stage, which we've heard a lot, quite a bit about today, is really, really important. Um, and retention strategies, ideally. Um, we offer an out-of-the-box enhanced analytic tool um, that allows for you to dig into customer purchasing behavior right away um, and figure out where you're potentially losing customers and where you're losing customers after they've checked out. Um, also, notifications become really important in this stage um, or email messaging via your favorite ESP or, or, or um, you know, texting platform. And what this does is gives you an opportunity to engage your subscribers, welcome them for joining, um, retarget customers for abandoned cart campaigns and increase conversion. If you're doing this all manually, um, it's just gonna cost a tremendous amount of time and not allow you to focus on what's most important. And that's really finding that product market fit at this stage. So, you know, a good example of that where, um, you know, we've seen some some significant growth is uh, with merchants like Verve who have been able to um, actually hold on one second here. I'm going to actually going to stop this for a second because it's not pulling my current slides. Um, let me re present. Sorry about that, guys. No stress. There we go. OK, so lovely. Now we're where we are. I want to be so. Uh, Thanks everybody. So Verve Coffee Roasters, uh, which has been on recharge for some time now, did was able to scale up very quickly within their first six months, experiencing 113% subscriber growth. And a lot of that was just using our out-of-the-box tooling, our out-of-the-box notifications, um, and uh, the customer portal management system that, that we offer. The idea is this allowed them to build a really awesome front end experience. So they did use kind of custom product detail pages and cart flows to make it really just awesome and beautiful to check out and discover this product. Um, I think coffee subscriptions with which, which is what this is often sell themselves. Um, 
once they're you know coming to you on a regular basis. So really for them, the key was acquisition. Um, as we move to the next stage of business, as we look at expansion, um, expansion and uh, businesses really have found that product market fit. And now it's really about figuring out what customers like specifically about the products that they're engaged in and they're paying you consistently for it and figuring out how to extend that lifetime value that long um, and, and reduce the churn and increase average order value. Um, so usually at this stage, they need to increase their focus into the customers they've already acquired um, and figure out how to retain them. So first, um, one of the things we talk often about is really building out the customer portal experiences, whether you're using our, our out of the box themes within Recharge or you're building um, custom themes with our theme engine or even our API. Um, and the idea is once set up, customers are logging in to change their order dates to swap products and do all the types of things that we know and found reduce churn. Um, a quick stat on that is customers that engage with their subscription on average, stay subscribed twice as long. So those automated notifications you're sending um, to get them back to the portal to upsell them uh, and add one-time products to their upcoming subscription order or, uh, or potentially come up and update billing information um, can all have a huge impact on uh, your business and extending the, the the lifetime value that you're finding with these customers. So that leads us into churn. Um, and a lot of businesses at this stage are figuring out how do I get someone to stop dropping off between the second and the third month or the first and the second month of my subscription once you drill in on the data and see where people are typically um, leaving your business. Um, so some of the automations that we've built out is customer cancellate or retention strategies um, that if a customer you know, goes ahead and goes to their portal to cancel, um, it gives them automated options to either offer discounting, uh, skip, delay deliveries, change order dates, swap products. Um, and then of course, leveraging our webhooks and some of the integration stacks uh, that, that, that we offer, you can send them win back workflows with discounts to reactivate their subscriptions um, or potentially just subscribe or buy something else. Um, and then, of course, the Dunning um, or card decline handling tools that we offer out of the box allows you to send timely notifications to customers to figure out when, um, you know, to update their, their, their billing, uh, to retry their cards at the optimal dates um, and add that level of logic. And there's also a lot of expanded integrations um, uh, in Clavio and Churnbuster uh, and a platform from ARPU. And of course, we heard from Alloy today, which helps automate a lot of these types of workflows as well. Um, so all of that just allows you to send people communications at the right time to take action on their subscriptions. Um, one of the most exciting things that we're now extending into is that we've launched uh, something called Recharge SMS. Uh, we obviously integrate with a variety of other awesome SMS tools in the market, but we've heard loud and clear that building SMS notifications into the platform automatically is something that really has helped our merchants succeed. So you can now swap add one-time products, delay shipments, update billing info, and shipping addresses, and skip shipments all from text um, and text messages that come from Recharge based on various events. Um, so the idea is you can focus on building your business. There's less tickets typically generated if customers can reconcile via SMS or call in. Um, and a huge awesome aspect of this is we've built this product into Gorgeous with their team um, so that if there is a uh, more than two texts received, um, options are generated out to a support ticket in a platform like Gorgeous so that that can be handled by an actual human um, to take things further. But we found um, this has had huge impact for merchant success uh, with one of our early merchants that tested this out, Gem. Um, they, were, they experienced 13 times the amount of recurring orders that were retained from people not churning and, and adding products. Um, and also uh, this allowed them to engage 60,000 new customers in the first seven months. Um, so the idea is obviously there's huge time savings, but also as, as we talked about earlier, um, doing automation correctly can also do a better job often than we could ourselves um, since things are triggered off these various types of subscription events. Um, the last stage that merchants you know, need to think about is of course when they've reached, and this is what we all hope for, um, the mature operating at scale stage of a subscription business. Um, and in that state, of course, you have a reliable customer base that's growing organically and name brand recognition within the industry. Um, and really at this stage, um, 
you need to increase, increase the focus on these customers you've already acquired in addition to the acquisition channels that you're sustaining for growth. Um, so at this stage is really when um, the enhanced analytics tools that I alluded to earlier, whether you're doing them in recharge or whether you're sending that data out to a platform of choice, um, become critical to both be able to ingest quickly without having to do too much custom work um, and of course take action on um, quickly as well. So, you know, we have merchants uh, like Dr. Axe who've been able to leverage our API at scale and a lot of the integration stacks that we've offered. Um, now over two years on Recharge, they've found 30% less churn on that uh, since working with Recharge and a 30% increase in subscription revenue year over year. Um, that kind of stuff for an established business that was already successful when they came over came from um, really leveraging our API. Dr. Ox actually helped us innovate a lot of our API over the years um, since they launched on us. Um, and the reason that becomes important is because, as several of the other panelists today alluded to, there's a, a time and place where you have unique business cases. You might be running a headless stack. You might be um, leveraging a variety of different software that doesn't standard integrate, um, standardly integrate, and uh, you can leverage API to do it the way you want. Um, one other tool that businesses, both at small and large scales, leverage as well is uh, our automated workflows tool within Recharge. That's um, not going to do the type of lifting that something like Alloy does, uh, but what it does allow is for simple things like free discounted trial product workflows. Um, you can use your API to swap products or change interval frequencies to do something like a discounted 14-day trial that then converts to a monthly subscription um, or SKU swapping where you're changing um, products between subscriptions to figure out that right recipe that keeps your um, your subscribers delighted and interested and, and the products that are being delivered to them relevant. So um, the point I'm making is, is if a lot of the in-house built tooling and integration stacks that we've you know built out over the years doesn't serve that. The idea is that whether it's Recharge or other platforms, you really want to look into the API to figure out um, as you engage agencies or your in-house development teams to build out the types of workflows that you want, that you're selecting a platform um, that, that offers the type of communication via its database that, that you're looking to achieve. And uh, I think that's a bit it for me. Amazing. Yeah, thank you so much for, for that, Kevin. Um, you know, I found it fascinating, the, the growth of subscription-based businesses, um, certainly relative to the SMP-type businesses. So that was pretty interesting to learn. Um, yeah, a few questions did come in that I uh, would love to get uh, answered by you. Lane Norman's asking, is there a way to automate emails to customers when a subscription item's price is increased or decreased? Mm, that's a great question, Lane. Um, it wouldn't work out of the box with Recharge. However, um, there are platforms that, well, first I say, okay, so I think the context is you'd want to experiment with pricing and then update customers, obviously, that there's been a price change. Um, it could certainly be done via webhook. Like I could give you the approach to building that out, but it wouldn't be something that would happen out of the box. Uh, we are doing some expanded customer data syncing with platforms like Klaviyo um, that would potentially allow for that type of logic to be built into their workflows. But um, interesting feedback. I, I'd be interested to probe that one further. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was a great question. Uh, Tori Jordan asked, we are looking at using a limited edition membership model for our subscriptions. Does Recharge offer a tool to keep track of a wait list? Interesting. So the idea would be that you'd collect some sort of wait list and then potentially bill customers later for it. You could, in theory, yeah. you just offer it as a separate subscription product um, that I would yeah. call a wait list product. And I think the key, if I'm interpreting that question correctly, is that you're going to want to vault the credit card so that when things do come up later that you can just ask for permission and then ideally bill them. So yeah, you could do a custom checkout flow for a wait list product that you could then swap after for the actual product um, and then send notifications around that. So yeah, totally could do that. Awesome. Yeah, that's why I love these webinars. The, the merchants come prepared with great questions, which gets our uh, brains churning to, to keep improving our products. I love it. Uh, another question here for you is, is what are common automations for subscriptions that you see most commonly used and why, they, why are they important? It's a good question. Um, I talked about trial subscriptions earlier. I think that's probably the most common automation that I see merchants set up is, you know, our, our product subscription kind of rules that we create for 
products allow you to set certain cadences of billing. But when you want to change the sequence of that, so maybe have someone pay a discounted price to try something for 14 days, um, I often recommend discounted instead of free, by the way, because a lot of people just mm. get your free product and then cancel. Um, so make them pay a discounted rate 14 days later, bill in for the full price of the product. Um, and then switch to your normal interval frequency. Our workflows tool allows to do that. You can do that via the API and a variety of other things. And the only other thing I'd add to that is if you, I, I highly recommend like a trial kit if you can, depending on what your business model is versus um, giving them the full sized product right away. Again, this is dependent on business product model, but that is something that I see very commonly used. Got it. And a few more questions popping in here. Lane Norman asking another question. How do you avoid customers opting into subscriptions just for the 20% discount and then opting out continuously? Totally. Sure you get that question a lot. Great question. <laughs> um, it's a million dollar question too. Um, I, I, I'm probably guilty too of doing that myself before. Um, but basically, um, I think the best thing to think about is one, maybe your discounting is too high. 20% is pretty standard. You may want to drop that a little bit to re you know, decentivize customers from canceling right after. There are ways that you can block people from continuously purchasing, but I, it's not something I'd recommend. Often if someone's subscribing a lot and, and, and unsubscribing, that tells me that if you offered a cheaper product potentially at a one-time rate or a cheaper yeah. subscription with upsells for lots of small products might be better. Um, if it's just a habit of malicious users, I, that's one thing you may want to block them from, from checking out with fraud tools. But the other way to go about it is ask yourself, is this a bad customer? Is this just someone who wants to consume my product differently? People love sales and deals. So, you know, one thing that we've told merchants to do to lock people in and prevent too much of that is offer a membership program. And so instead we, I talked about on our last webinar, an access model. So instead of offering mm -hmm. a physical product subscription, do a digital product subscription where it's like, um, like an Amazon prime. So have your customers pay to be a member and then give them access to products that they can purchase at cheaper rates. It could just even be one-time products. This prevents that type of behavior and ensures that they're paying you for something right away just to be included. So some involve changing your business model. Other things just are more about blocking IP. And then the other side is just about pricing, I would say. Got it. And then the last question we'll get you out on is from Mike Dempson. He's asking, what's the most important or profitable automation with recharge? Mm. Well, I, I mean, I would like to say the, the idea of just the product itself is the most valuable bit, but uh, I'm, I think that's too easy of an answer. Um, so obviously, yeah. subscriptions generating orders automatically is, is, is the most powerful part of our platform. I would say the other aspect of it is notifications. It's really, that's it. Like yeah. getting people, like you heard me throw that stat, customers engage with their subscriptions, stay subscribed twice as long. Um, that's because, again, if I'm subscribing to a product, usually depending on the vertical, I'm subscribing to something I believe in and experience con the content you're generating. There's so much other stuff around that. I think we did a panel with uh, My Lola, which does like women's care products. Um, and they've built such a strong brand around that that I think was augmented with their blog. But a lot of that within the least our platform was about sending them timely notifications to check things out, to check their subscription, to interact with it. Um, so I think figuring out a way to get your customers hit with the, a timely notification, whether it's from us or another platform, around times when a subscription's created, canceled, um, reactivated, you know, or upcoming charge or an upcoming orders you know, coming, getting an automation to get them a timely communication, I think is the most powerful thing you can do. Got it. And then one more question did come in, but I'll, uh, we, we actually are fortunately out of time, but if Kevin, if you just want to answer uh, uh, Gianna there, once we uh, get off of air here, uh, that'd be great. Thank you so much again, Kevin, for joining us. Love having recharge with us. And I know everybody learned a lot with you today. Thanks so much, Kevin. Great joining you guys. Thanks everybody. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. And then the final note I just want to throw to everybody is, um, as I said, we do multiple webinars each month. Um, next month, we're doing a, a webinar on personalized online shopping experience. I just dropped the registration link in there so you guys can sign up, put it on your calendars right away. We have multiple sets of AirPod Pros up for grabs on that one as well. So yeah, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us on a Friday. Really excited to, to have learned so much from all of our panelists today. And until next time, take care, everybody.